Good morning. I welcome you as we gather on this 14th Sunday of Pentecost. This morning we are doing the service via remote only. Made that decision last night because of the impending hurricane and while things are not yet as bad as what we thought it might be, also didn't want our music director Horatio Castro driving to North Reading in this weather since he lives out in the central part of the state where it is going to be worse. I want to thank Andy Graham who is pinch hitting this morning for our tech and we are continuing our Beyond the Pew interview sermons and this morning blessed to have Melissa Audia here who's going to be talking about how she is living out her faith via the new North Reading Human Rights Group. Next Sunday's Beyond the Pew interview sermon will be with Gail McLaughlin, our Christian Education Director who is attending seminary. She's going to talk about her continuing journey of faith and so we are looking forward to that as well. If you have any prayer requests this morning, please chat, tap them into the chat box and we will certainly lift them up to the Lord during the prayers of the faithful. Our young adults will be going to Small Lot Farms in North Andover one week from today to see the musical Godspell. Those who would like more information about that and would like us to reserve tickets for them are asked to text Patrick Clerken or Dan Yella Gutierrez. You can also contact the church office. Work on the parking lot is continuing and progress is being made. The goal is to have everything finished by Labor Day. And if you do come to the church and can use the upper parking lot, that would be advisable. And then the cupola this morning is lit, or actually this coming week is lit in memory of Fred Kirby Bauer by his family. So let us draw near now to God's throne of everlasting grace that we might rejoice and be glad in the love that is from everlasting to everlasting. And my apologies, because we do not have Horatio this morning, all of the music will be a cappella. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains fall down and the seas will rise at the count of your name. I sing for joy at the works of your hand. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. Come, let us open our hearts to the spirit of the living God. The spirit that makes it possible for us to be faithful disciples of the risen Christ. Where will we witness to the love of the risen Christ? In all our places of labor and leisure around the corner and around the world. How will we serve the risen Christ? By working for justice where there is oppression. By offering comfort where there is pain. And love where there is hatred. 
And why do we serve the risen Christ? We love because he first loved us. Absolutely. Let us join in the hymn, To God Be the Glory. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great are rejoicing that Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be, a wonder, a transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come through the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Please join me in the unison prayer of invocation. God, whose glory came to dwell among us in Jesus of Nazareth, we give you thanks for his love that was gentle enough to weep at the tomb of his good friend Lazarus, but also strong enough to say a resounding no to the money changers in the temple. Let the love that was in him be in us, so that we may be courageous in the struggle for justice and peace. Let not our hearts be troubled or afraid as we seek to do your will here on earth, even as it does done in heaven. This we pray in the name of your only begotten Son, who is our Savior and taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. As God has blessed us in so many ways, more ways than we can possibly count, we come to God's altar now with grateful hearts to present our tithes and our offerings. Please join me in the unison prayer of dedication. Holy One, because you have given us gifts in different measure, as we come to your altar with this faithful offering, we ask you to open the eyes of our hearts 
that we may see the many ways we can use those gifts. This we ask, that we may be true disciples of the Christ who has called us to follow him. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. So one of the nice things about modern technology and be able to live stream our worship services, we still have a mystery box item thanks to Ka um, Calvin Lowe. There he is right there. And that's a great picture of uh, Calvin. And so with bated breath, my question is, what is the mystery object this morning? A toy car. Wow. Well done, Calvin. That's a bit of a challenge. But you know what? I thought of two things when I saw your car. First of all, it reminds me of the car my father had, our family car, when I was growing up. It was an old Barracuda. And lots of wonderful memories from those days. And the other thing that came to mind is looking at that car made me very sad because it made me think of my car. And as many of you know, after Christmas, I got an electric gas hybrid Toyota Prius. And the reason why I was sad was because on Thursday, I had to fill up the gas tank for the first time since February. And, you know, technology is wonderful. We're using technology this morning. Years ago, we had a really bad hurricane, a really bad snowstorm. We might not be able to have church at all, but because of modern technology, we can do this service and still praise God. And modern technology is with us in so many ways and it can help us make this world better. And one is all these cars now that are plug-ins and using so much less gas. And that's one of the reasons why I got this car is because God's creation is a gift to us. And we need to take care of it. God said to Adam in the Garden of Eden, go forth and tend the garden, to take care of it. And so God's creation isn't just for us to use, like eating a meal and being done with it. God's creation is there for us to take care of it. And with modern technology, there are more and more ways we can do that with solar power and there's also nuclear fusion that we're being told is going to be so much cleaner and better for the environment and also for us because, you know, when we put stuff in the air, we breathe that in and it's not good for us either. And so God wants us to take care of creation, not only because it's beautiful and it's a gift, but also for our own good. And that's why we can be thankful for technology and all the things that we can do with it, from cars to solar and so many other things. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks that you have given us the gift of life and you've given us minds that can do amazing things and come up with amazing inventions. Help us always 
to use our minds to make this world a better place and to do your will. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our second hymn this morning is special because it has its roots here in this sanctuary. It was written by George F. Root, a Reading resident, North Reading resident back in the 1800s. And he wrote a number of hymns. In fact, if you look at the plaque on the choir loft, you'll see his name there. He actually wrote the tune that we now know as Jesus Loves the Little Children. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus bless the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus bless the little children of the world. Please join me in the responsive call to prayer. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Let us lift up our hearts to the Lord. Let us take a moment to enter into this sacred time of silence. This morning we have a number of prayer concerns to lift up to the Lord. First of all, our prayers are with uh, Billy Hayes, who is Sandy Hayes's son. He lives down in Florida, was diagnosed yesterday with a brain tumor. This is all very sudden. I understand he woke up, couldn't see, and was brought to the hospital. Tests revealed he has a brain tumor and there will be surgery taking place on Monday. We certainly surround him with our love and our prayers and pray for healing. Lord, in your goodness. Hear our prayer. Also, this past week, I went out to see Peggy Bauer. As many of you know, Peggy turned 109 just over two weeks ago. She badly sprained her ankle following that and has stopped eating and drinking and is now receiving hospice care. And so we give thanks to God for a life well lived and pray that she may feel that peace that passes all understanding as she walks this valley to ultimate life. Lord, in your goodness. Hear our prayer. Also, Brandon Bartlett, who had a serious fall a little over a week ago and had a bad head injury is now home and we give thanks to God for that. Lord, in your goodness. Hear our prayer. Also, a number of uh, things to celebrate this morning during our prayers of the faithful. First of all, we have here a picture and this is Ryan Michael, and he was born this past week. Our congratulations to Kevin and Ashley Flynn on the birth of their first son, their first child. We pray that God's blessing will be upon them and that they will have many wonderful, grace-filled moments of love and joy in the years to come. Also, our congratulations uh, to Ryan's 
maternal grandmother, Marian Muse. Lord, in your goodness, hear our prayer. This past couple of days, I've been driving quite a bit, which is why I had to fill my gas tank up. I was out in Fishkill, New York, for a wedding on Friday evening, and we celebrate with Mike Poplaski and Liz Fonseca, who were united in the covenant, covenant of marriage. They were actually already married. They were one of the victims of the COVID cancellations. They had to postpone their wedding three times. And, uh, but they wanted it to, to be blessed, and that took place Friday evening. We ask God's blessing upon them. Lord, in your goodness. Hear our prayer. And following that ceremony, Saturday morning, I got up and drove to Brighton to celebrate the wedding of Justin O'Call and uh, Claire Cunell. And it was at the boathouse on the Charles River in Brighton, which is where they met. They both rode in college. And we celebrate with them and ask God's blessing upon them as well. Lord, in your goodness. Hear our prayer. While I was at that wedding, I also saw Claire's brother, PK, and his wife, Kerry. And as many of you know, we have been praying for their son, Freddie. Freddie was diagnosed with a rare childhood form of leukemia. He had his bone marrow transplant about a week ago. So happy to announce that he is now playing peekaboo, and his doctors are very happy with the blood work, which is showing that the bone marrow transplant is doing what it is supposed to do. So we rejoice and give thanks to God for that. Lord, in your goodness. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. Holy One, you have heard the prayers of your children, your servants, both those that have been spoken and those that are quietly resting in our hearts. Lord God, we give you thanks that you are always near, even when we are so far from you. You are always reaching out, always beckoning us to follow your only begotten Son that we might find the life that is truly worth living, the life that is truly abundant. On this day, Lord, we especially pray for those who will be experiencing the brunt of a tropical storm. Henri, we pray for safety. We also pray for our country, for the divisions that we are seeing, that they might be healed, that we might truly be a nation, one nation under God. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to bless this community of faith. For truly, we have an important role to play, not only in this community, but in the wider world by following the light and being the light, bringing healing and hope to hearts that are troubled, to hearts that are broken. All this we ask, good and gracious God, knowing that you hear all of our prayers. And for that, we give you thanks today and for all the days that are yet to be. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lift it up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. 
Holy, 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 I want to see you. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the Gospel according to Luke. It is the parable of the Good Samaritan. There is an interesting exchange that Jesus has with a lawyer before he tells the parable of the Good Samaritan. After saying that we should love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves, a lawyer stands up and says to Jesus, who is my neighbor? And Jesus says, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, then he sat him on his animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? The lawyer said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Here ends the reading of God's word. May we you receive its wisdom and use it for the glory of our creator. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So I am going to invite Melissa Audier to come forward and join me for this morning's interview sermon. And so Melissa has been attending here with her family for a number of years. How many exactly is it? 24. He'll has be it 24 been 24? November, yeah. Okay, all righty. And um, she's been involved in many aspects of uh, the church and one in particular that is near and dear to her heart is the Environmental Stewardship Ministry, which has done some wonderful things. And maybe you could highlight a few of those. Sure, sure. Um, well, we started the recycling program. There wasn't one here. When I think you would sneak some stuff out to the front of the <laughs> we, your house. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We would but, do uh, that. Yeah, but so. we didn't really have anything, so we. Um, convinced um, council to get the um, recycling dumpster. 
Um, we, uh, we put in all um, different bulbs for um, yeah. energy efficiency. Yeah. We bought um, smart thermometers. Yeah. And we've done, a, we've done a lot around education. That's so right. we've had like um, speakers and movies and uh, field trips. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we have the green tips yeah. thing. In the, yeah. And you mentioned the LED lighting. Yeah. And not only does that help the environment, but it's also saved us a lot of money. <laughs> So, nice to hear. <laughs> absolutely. So we thank you for all of the ministry that you've done through environmental stewardship. And now, within the last year or so, you've become involved in another cause that is really a way for you to live out your faith absolutely. beyond the pews on Sunday morning. And that is with the uh, North Reading Human Rights Group. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that, what sure. uh, its mission is. Sure. Um, so it started uh, about a year ago after George Floyd's murder, um, where the country kind of woke up to this, um, this kind of oppressive environment that, um, that many people were facing. Um, there was kind of a, a group of concerned citizens um, that really wanted to, to do something in town. And um, they kind of all got together and people from like the police and, and the elder services, lots of people were invited. Um, you know, it got started that way. I wasn't involved at that point. Um, and then it kind of, you know, whittled down to like a core group and I was invited to join. And um, it's just been wonderful. Um, it's, it's a lovely group of people, um, very, uh, very safe place to, you know, to kind of talk about what we're thinking and feeling. Um, I'm going to uh, just say, hold on one second, because I sure. forgot to bring up the mission. Hold sure. on. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. And, and while Melissa is doing that, I will say, you know, from my own perspective, this is a theological concern. Uh, how we treat one another. And it's one of the reasons why I decided to use the parable of the Good Samaritan, because one of the things that needs to be understood for this parable to really hit home is back then, Jews hated Samaritans. They were foreigners. And so when that lawyer stands up and says, well, who's my neighbor? Jesus tells this story and the priest walks by, so he ends up not being the hero. And the Levite walks by. A Levite was someone who worked in the temple. So they weren't priests, but they worked in the temple. He walked by on the other side of the road, and so he wasn't the hero. The hero was the Samaritan this man who was different. And uh, so uh, Jesus is making it very clear that just because we're different doesn't mean we're less than. And in fact, people who are different sometimes can rise to great heights. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. you have some. Sure, so the mission that we came up with pretty simple and straightforward, to support and defend the civil and human rights of all residents of North Reading. And our vision is um, that North Reading is where everyone feels that they're treated equally regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, sexual and gender identity, age and ability. Okay. So I know that when we first started talking about this, one of the questions that went through my mind is certainly not in North Reading. And in one respect, that's true. We haven't had anything of the order of a George Floyd uh, or, you know, hate crimes where uh, a church has been burned down or um, somebody has been physically accosted and sent to the hospital. But you were saying that even though we don't have things to that degree, mm -hmm. that 
we do need to be concerned about that, that there right. are other yeah. incidences that are taking place. And maybe you could share a little sure. bit there. Yeah. yeah. So when you asked that question, um, I thought about it, because it's, it's a relevant question. Sure. Um, and I, so my, my, I was telling him earlier that my, um, kind of the way I, I saw it as the hate crime is like, you know, if you think about fish, that's like the whale, you know. There's a lot of other fish mm -hmm. along the way. So when you say the whale, the something whale is like, like a George, big, George Floyd exactly, incident. Like a hate crime, like right, there's a crime that caliber, that's being committed. Yeah. Right. But um, this kind of there's trigger degrees. words, but mm -hmm. systemic racism, which is certainly everywhere in America and certainly in North Reading. And, um, and the other one, I'm spacing on the word. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, um, little um, transgressions, so mm -hmm. um, microaggressions, excuse me, microaggressions. Um, so those might be um, because we're, we have grown up in our you know, society um, where we are, you know, as, as white people, we are the, um, the majority. So we might say something to somebody who's not white and mm -hmm. just think it's normal, and mm -hmm. in fact, we might be in some way insulting them. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. all about education. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting to me, as you were talking, two things came to mind. One is that the majority doesn't understand the minority as well as the minority understands Absolutely. the majority. And Absolutely. the illustration that I give that applies to all of us is Catholic Protestant. And we live in a very Catholic state, and I'm not complaining about that by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I used to say that we live in a state that is so Catholic that its state abbreviation used to be mass. Um, <laughs> but you know, one of the things that I've found over the years is that Catholics know very little about Protestants, and Protestants tend to know more about Catholics, and, and that's the that's result of living as a, uh, a minority, uh, you have to be more aware. And uh, the other example that I was thinking of, and you know, discrimination, you're right, comes in many forms and many degrees. And an example of that is I'm left handed, okay? And do you know what the Latin word for left is? No. It's the word that we get for sinister. So in that culture, wow. left was considered bad. Yeah. Another one, what is the French word for left? Gauche. <laughs> Someone who's gauche is awkward, doesn't really yeah. fit in. Oh, and you know, you think back to many years ago, teachers would force children who were left-handed, who that's who they were, to be something they weren't. By the time I was in school, they didn't do that anymore. But you know, there are other little ways in which left-handers are discriminated against. So when I was growing up, I couldn't use the ice cream scoop in our house. And the reason why is because it's made for left-handers. And when I would use right. it, the little doohickey that would go back and forth, just using it left-handed, it would break it. <laughs> so I was forbidden to use the um, uh, ice cream scoop. And you know, the other thing that I remember is that uh, notebooks, spiral notebooks, the spiral is on the left-hand side, so if you're left-handed, by the end of the day, oh you'd have little grooves in, in your hand, or you'd learn to, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, people who are different, we have to do a better job of understanding that different right. isn't better than or less than, it's, it's different. Mm -hmm. and, and you were telling me before the service that there are, and you are aware of a number of instances here in North sure. Reading where it may not be that whale, but it's a smaller fish. Yes, yeah. Um, well, having joined this group, um, you know, we really see it as a safe place for people. Um, and, and we've had people um, of color and um, come and, and share stories with us. And it's really some really sad things that you would never imagine would happen here. Um, We've had a, a girl um, 
with, uh, from Indian descent who has been told in school to go to the back of the bus. Mm. Um, when we had a, uh, this summer, last summer, excuse me, um, the North Reading Youth for Anti-Racism. Um, mm. That group is a wonderful group that got started last summer. They did summer. a walk. They did a walk, yeah, and during that walk, you know, we had citizens yell um, profanities at us, um, give us the finger, mm. people that we, we knew, you know, it was, yeah. it was very sad. Yeah. I was sharing with Melissa before the service a memory from my childhood, and it made a huge impact on me. It made me realize that uh, people of faith aren't always quite so holy. I was probably in the fifth grade and our church was doing an every member canvas and to explain what that means, years ago what some churches would do for stewardship is there would be a particular Sunday afternoon and they would have groups of people that would go out and visit every single family in the church and they would take the pledge cards yeah. and People would hand them in and we'd come back. So my father was doing that. We got to this one house. The gentleman who lived there was doing some work on the Sabbath. He was on a ladder painting his house or cleaning the gutters or something. My father walked over to him, said who he was, and I will add that back then we had a wonderful minister perfect name for a minister too. Our minister was Reverend Sin. He was very involved in the civil rights movement. So when this gentleman on the ladder understood who my father was and who he was there, he got very angry. He came down that ladder like a shot, chased my father out of the yard, and using the Lord's name in vain, I will add, said, don't come back here looking for money until, referring to the minister, you get rid of that blankety blank and lover. Wow. So that breaks my heart because that's not who we're called to be. And one of the things that I become more and more aware of is that we as a people of faith have to do a better job of telling and letting people know in our communities who we really are. Unfortunately, in our increasingly secular society where people have no connections with churches, they see all people of faith as conservative, evangelical, judgmental, holier than thou people and they want no part of it. And I will also say that I know conservative evangelicals who aren't like that, but this is how people in our society see us. Mm -hmm. And we have to do a better job of letting people know that this is a place where being different isn't a sin. Yeah. Question that I have is, do you see what you're doing with the human rights group, North Reading Human Rights Group, as a reflection of your faith? Definitely. Yeah. 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 I, f I feel that this is just the Lord's work, really. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel like I get just as much out of this mm. as I, I feel like I get more out of it than I think, you know, that mm -hmm. I'm giving. Mm -hmm. um, just being able to understand how important, like you said, it's so important to be able to let other people know that we are there for them but also to, to take a look at our, ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you know, like with the micro aggressions, mm -hmm. be able to see what am I doing mm -hmm. or what is this church doing that might be keeping people away, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And um, uh, you know, I was thinking as you were talking that Jesus did exactly what you are talking about. If we look at the ministry of Jesus from one end of the Gospels to the other, we will see him continually reaching out to people who were different. Let's start with the disciples. You know, fishermen, 
a tax collector. They hated tax collectors even more than we hate tax collectors today, maybe. <laughs> he chose people who weren't the cream of the crop in the society, the looked up to people. He looked and chose the people who were looked down upon. And he reached out to, to women, the woman at the Samaritan well. He sat down and talked to her. Men did not talk to women. In fact, there was a Jewish prayer back then that all men would say first thing in the morning. And it would begin with, I thank you, Lord, that I was not born a woman. I know. I didn't realize that. <laughs> yes, wow. yes. Uh, in fact, there were rabbis who would say that a husband could divorce a wife simply for burning his dinner or speaking badly of his mother. And of course, women could not divorce men, but men could divorce their wives. So Jesus embraced women. We saw in the parable of the Good Samaritan, he embraced foreigners. He embraced lepers who were seen as being sick as a judgment from God. You know, and now I'm thinking back to the early days of the AIDS uh, epidemic, and uh, there were people of faith saying, this is God's plague upon them. And, you know, that's hogwash. It really is. And Jesus reached out to lepers who were shunned by everyone else, and he actually touched them. So absolutely, you were doing uh, God's work. You actually identified a mark of ministry. And I hadn't really thought about this. I've said it, but never really identified it as a mark of true ministry. You said you feel very often like you get more out of it than you put into it. And I find that so true of ministry in, in many different ways. And, um, you know, we look at this congregation, and one of the things that makes my heart sing, and I think probably yours as well, is that we have a congregation of so many people who are different. And I, I wrote it down. We have, you know what, I'm going to let you... Uh, <laughs> I'll say the name, you say the country. Okay. So our music director, Horatio Castro, originally from? Argentina. Daniela Gutierrez, who has been worshiping with us for almost a year now. Colombia. Garo and Nisreen Toby, very active in our congregation. Lebanon. Maria Baker. Philippines. Her husband, Chris, uh, is in a wheelchair because he suffers from? Person with um, MS. That's right. Uh, Victor Hui. Hong Kong. He and his wife own China Cuisine. Yeah. Very outstanding members yeah. of our congregation, our community, and yes. very generous. Oh my gosh, lovely. lovely yeah. And his wife, May. China. He came from the mainland. Uh, Saman Shiko. Iraq. Yeah. He, he fled Iraq because he's Christian. Right. Uh, Rosemary Jeffries. England. And. Uh, new to our church as well, Nathan Lowe. Australia. Yeah. And the fact that we have so many people who are different and that we are ONA, open and affirming, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. uh, we do our best to welcome people who uh, are different in terms of sexual orientation, and I want to make sure I get the language correct, uh, genity, gender identity or expression. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know we have a lot of work still to do in all of these areas, but uh, we are, I think, on the right path. And I thank you for all of the wonderful work that you are doing. And you want to say a little bit more up on the screen now? Yes. Yeah, so um, this is our contact information. You know, this is if you want more information, if you'd like to join us, or if you want some help in this area. Um, so the group is called North Reading Human Rights Group. Um, our email address, northreadinghrg at gmail.com. We have a Facebook group under North Reading Human Rights Group, and Instagram is North Reading HRG. Yeah. Have I forgotten anything? Um, I just, I guess Please. maybe just um, talk a little bit about some of the things that we've 
been doing. Yes, please do. Um, so like I had mentioned a lot around education, um, because that's really how we can start to be open to um, and be able to see like the systemic racism, the, the little fish, you know. <laughs> so kind of get to know people. Exactly, yeah. So we've, we have um, been doing book discussions. Um, we've done a few. We did Stamped in the winter, and we just did Waking Up White. If anybody wants to information about those books, please let me know. Um, you can email there or me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, or and, you can contact the church office, and yep. we'll get you in touch, Melissa. Yes, definitely. And um, we've been doing a lot of articles in the transcript around you know different um, celebration days of celebration. Um, we did like a non-binary. Um, kind of an uh, education understanding a lot of people don't really know what that means and uh, moment of confession I will say that I do know what non-binary means but I don't understand it and so I need to learn about this and I will say that uh, Gail McLaughlin is going to be doing a, uh, a class on this later most of the communities around us surrounding us have had a human rights group for a while, uh -huh. so we're, we're kind of new to the game, and so we've been reaching out to other towns, yeah. too. To you're playing catch-up, but I'm yeah. sure you're yeah. going to catch up very quickly. On behalf of the congregation, I want to thank you for this important ministry, mm -hmm. and we ask God's blessing upon you and the entire group. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me the chance to talk about it. Absolutely. God bless. Our closing hymn is Days of Elijah. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Lift your voice, it's a year of jubilee, and out of Zion's hill salvation comes. These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as white in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee, and out of Zion's hill salvation comes. People of God, our service of worship has ended. Let us prepare to go forth wherever we may be to continue our service of love, knowing that our God goes before us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit be upon you all. Amen. Shalom to you now, shalom, my friends. May God's full mercy bless you, my friend, in all your living and through your loving. Christ be your shalom, Christ be your shalom.